KwaZulu-Natal remains on level 10 weather warning as heavy rains continue. Emergency services in the province say they're monitoring the situation in cases of more flooding. EMS spokesperson Robert McKenzie gave us an update earlier. Well, at this stage, our main type of calls that we have been responding to is still our traditional type of emergencies that we normally respond to on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, people becoming sick or uh, being injured and we're responding to them, taking, treating them and taking them to hospital. We also still have been uh, performing inter-hospital transfers where we transfer patients between hospitals. Um, in the Etiquini area, we haven't responded to any flood-related incidents where people have been injured or uh, fatally injured. Uh, fortunately, at this stage, uh, from our side, no fatally injured patients or injured patients at this stage. While the heavy rainfall persists, residents are urged not to cross what used to be small streams or rivers. Be careful of what used to be a, maybe a small stream or small river that you could easily cross. Uh, they become flood, flooded very quickly and do not attempt to try to cross any flooded uh, water or streams. Uh, even in a vehicle, you're not safe. If the roadway is flooded, please don't try to drive across it. Um, because we know that the vehicles become waterlogged and are able to uh, be washed away very easily. Um, also, if they are in a low-lying area, to please evacuate if they feel it's unsafe to do so. Etaguni Municipality Mayor um, Kolisi Kaunda is expected to assess the damage to water and road infrastructure in the Umdoti Beach area shortly. The Umdoti Water Treatment Works was washed away and access to the road and the area was closed off because of the flooding. Our reporter Jumalo Mokhlaudi is there. And he joins us live now to give us an update of the latest on the ground. Dumaule, uh, take us through some of those latest developments as uh, there is some cause for concern. Yes, certainly a cause for concern here uh, in Mdloti. And uh, we see that uh, uh, the waterworks uh, facility that was uh, damaged earlier uh, during earlier floods. I'm just going to step out of shot so you can see has again uh, been uh, severely damaged. Uh, you can see that the water is still coming through and piping has been exposed and much of uh, the area which had been covering uh, this particular water treatment facility, including the palisading uh, fencing, um, has uh, been washed away. So this is something that has raised uh, some great concern because residents here uh, have uh, also said they've been without water and power. But um, the mayor is here on site uh, to basically uh, see for himself uh, what is happening. Uh, mayor Mkolisi Kaunja, thank you for joining us on Newsroom Africa. You have just arrived moments ago uh, to see the damage. It seems like it's a, a double blow, uh, something that is happening again. What, what were your initial um, reactions? Yes, we are just coming from the executive committee meeting now to get an update on the damages. Um, most of the areas, especially from the northern part of our city and the south, uh, Umlodi and the bluff areas where uh, our infrastructure has been severely damaged again. You'll recall that we put some remedial measures uh, to try and ensure that we resuscitate uh, services to communities which were without services after the April flood. But now it's a double blow, as you have said. Um, we've got uh, to come back here and restore the infrastructure again. But with electricity, there are many areas which have been affected. More than 60,000 residents uh, we have already started the processes. We have reinstated power to many of these areas. And some of the remaining areas, by 8 o'clock today, they will be able to access power. Right. Uh, as things stand right now, um, is, is, is it something that you're concerned of in terms of declaring a state of emergency or is that something that only the national uh, government can do uh, from your side w are you calling for that to happen no for now we are still conducting our assessments um, and we have identified the areas especially our wastewater uh, treatment uh, centers uh, which have been uh, affected and uh, in the areas of the south and the west we have been uh, identifying those uh, areas uh, part of the challenge is we had to evacuate some of the committee members, especially from this area of Umvoti and other areas 
those who are located um, in the retirement uh, villages, uh, we had to move them. About 50 of them have, have had to be moved uh, from where they were located. Uh, other communities as well, we've done that. We've identified community halls in areas where we can relocate some of the community members to be on the safer shelters uh, than remaining in their areas where they are at the moment. So uh, what will happen with those community members? Uh, the safety will be guaranteed for now, uh, but what about things like um, food? What about uh, those who've lost their homes? We've seen people's houses being washed away just up the road here. Um, what sort of assistance will you uh, provide on that regard? Yes, we are not working alone. We are working with the NGOs, uh, CPOs. Uh, they are coming on board, businesses, uh, to come and donate. Uh, other NGOs are constantly providing meals, uh, hot meals, to these uh, communities. Uh, we as a municipality have got food that is supplied to those uh, community members uh, because we need to guarantee that there is uh, a meal that is, is received in that area. Um, other people are donating clothes. Uh, others are donating sponges and many other stuff uh, that is really required by those people who have been dislocated. So we are working with different people and we'll be responding to the plight uh, of those who have been affected. But the city is working flat out. Uh, there is capacity to ensure that um, uh, we really open the roads which have been blocked and we unblock them. And we also ensure in terms of the services, especially water, the essential services, water and electricity, that we restore those services back to communities. Mr. Mayor, just behind you, we see that a part of the road also has been uh, washed away and has caved in. We've seen this in other parts of the road as well. Um, how much is this going to cost? This is a money question. Um, have you begun crunching the figures? And as a municipality, do you have uh, the budget in reserve to deal with this second blow, so to speak? You'll recall that uh, in the April flood, we estimated up to 5 uh, billion rents. Uh, in terms of restoring our infrastructure. Uh, we don't have such a capacity financially. We are a city with 52.3 uh, uh, billion rands, so therefore it's given that will require a national intervention in provincial departments. And we are happy that for now we are still uh, reprioritizing the budgets within the municipality uh, of the grants that have been given to us and as well as our budget so that we respond swiftly uh, to the challenges that we are, are confronting us. We can't be waiting uh, for further uh, monies. We need to look at what we have so that we can start restoring services. But there are long-term and medium-term uh, projects uh, which will cost a lot of uh, resources. So therefore, we'll also uh, knock to the door of the president and the cabinet and the provincial government to ascertain that we are able to bring those services back to our communities. In the time that I've been here, we've seen that entire, uh, if I can call it houses, in terms of the blocks of flats just up the road here, have been washed away. They've simply disappeared. One vehicle is trapped under infrastructure that also was uh, uh, swept away by this uh, deluge. Loss of life. Uh, what reports are you receiving, if any? For now, we have only received a report from our health departments that there are three uh, people who have been found, but one of them has got some wounds, which is an indication that the person was shot before, was thrown to the river. So the others, they are saying the cause of death is natural cause. So we, we are not 100% uh, certain that all of them, three of them, have been as a result of uh, the floods and the uh, heavy rains that we have received. All right. No, we'll leave it there. Thank you very much for that update. Yes, thank uh, you. That was the mayor of the Tequini municipality in Kolisi Kaunda giving us an overview of the situation. They're crunching the numbers, five billion during the last deluge that also damaged infrastructure. That was the estimate then. Still counting the cost as the further damage that has been incurred in the latest uh, floods uh, continues uh, to add to those figures. And of course, the death rate, uh, of course, uh, mentioning there that uh, one uh, of those three that have been found dead uh, is uh, presumed to have perhaps been killed earlier seeing that he had uh, gunshot wounds. So we will give you up to date uh, with uh, the latest developments as and when it happens, but that's the situation right now as it stands. And still, uh, the provincial and, of course, the local government calling on the national government for assistance because this is really a disastrous situation. With Absolutely. that respect, you in the studio.
Absolutely. We leave it there for now. Jumado Mokhtar giving us a sense of what's happening in, on the ground in KwaZulu-Natal, those floods leaving a trail of destruction.